When I went to university at Cardiff Met um, is really where I started my coaching. So they put me through my level one and my level two, and I was included in all the junior academy coaching and ended up in some Welsh coaching as well, which I was quite lucky to get. Um, but yeah, that's really where my coaching started was at Cardiff Met. Uh, so I coach at Solent Kestrels currently. Uh, coach the under 14 girls and do minis Kestrels, which is like two to six year olds and it's just the best fun in the world. <laughs> So I have a celebrity influence and then I have a real life normal person influence. Um, so my celebrity influence has got to be Kobe Bryant. Um, the work he's done for female basketball, the work he, his own career was incredible and he's definitely one of my biggest influences in the world. And then for my other influence is Vicky Milner. Um, she is the head of the junior women's program at Solent Kestrels. She was my coach at Itching College. She sort of pushed me in all different directions in basketball and really like showed me the love and passion I have for it. So she is hands down one of my biggest influences. So there's a few reasons. Uh, one of the biggest reasons I got into basketball myself was I was very fortunate to have a female PE teacher that was a basketball player. So she saw potential in me and pushed me, not pushed me, but like guided me towards basketball and then went to Itchin and Vicky did her magic um, and then went to Cardiff and they worked their magic on me as well. But for me, I think, especially in the South, there's not a lot of female um role models for the kids so really down here if you want to play like I, when i'm talking the south i'm speaking hampshire um there's only really two clubs that have girls basketball so for me it was a get into it be a role model for the kids and show the kids that you can be a female and be high level in sport and coach um I'm also a PE teacher, so I can thread my basketball knowledge into the local schools. Um, I did run a festival for girls just to introduce them to a sport that categorically down here is not a popular sport. Um, so yeah, mainly to just be a role model for the kids and show them there are different sports out there that they can excel in. When I was in Cardiff Met, I coached um, a mixture of boys and girls. Um, and then I've come back to Solent and I coach just the girls. Um, unless I do camps and then I coach both, which is hilarious and great fun. Cause they look at you like, do you know what you're talking about? And then they're like, yeah, I've played longer than you've been alive. So yep. <laughs> um, so I think the biggest challenge for me is the age group I coach dealing with the emotional side of things. Coaching girls is quite difficult, their emotions run high, um, but knowing when enough is enough and you just have to draw the line at whatever emotion they're feeling at that minute. A highlight for me is being able to coach the Welsh national team. Um, I was super excited to be part of that programme um, and I felt very privileged to be selected um it was a it was in my last year at uni so it was a stressful year there was definitely a massive highlight to me that and then we managed to get them to go over to northern ireland and play some tournaments um which i managed to set up so that's definitely one of the biggest highlights i love the program um literally i could not sing its praises enough um for me, the biggest thing is networking. Um, having a group of individuals, um, all female coaches, and you, Brian, obviously, um, but having all of us together and creating that network, not only in this country, but obviously Joey's in another country. Um, it's just amazing to be able to, like for me, when I read the list of who was on the programme, I was a bit like, oh my God. There's some big names on this program and I was so excited to get to work with those individuals. Um, I just think it's an incredible thing to do and it pushes 
women's coaching and women's sport in the direction that we need it to go. One of our tasks was to get people to describe us and that for me was a challenge but I'm actually really glad that you set that as a task because it showed me some key things about myself that I sometimes doubt but for me I got described quite a lot as an approachable individual so the kids feel that they can if they don't quite understand something they can come to me and ask rather than being scared to ask. I've seen so many different scenarios when I've coached against different teams where their players clearly don't feel they can speak to their coach. Um, so I think a massive strength for me is how approachable I am. Don't be scared to get involved. Um, I think that was a that was pu pushed into me at Cardiff Met. Um, I think Cardiff Met is run by some very strong females. Um, and they sort of pushed all of our female players into coaching and giving us the opportunity to coach. So any aspiring female coaches, just get involved, go to your club. They'll happily have you. Don't be scared to get involved. For me, I'm very much a, I'm a forward when I play. So when I'm trying to teach a point guard something, I'm like, okay, am I teaching them this right? <laughs> because I've never played the position. So when we're running plays, obviously I know it from my position point of view, but I struggle with the getting it to all the other positions. I think that's the most challenging thing for me is I'm, I have to understand it myself. So I might have to run it from a point guard's point of view. You wouldn't want me as your point guard, but I'd run it from a point guard, but so that I have an understanding of it when I explain it to the kids. If I went with a film, it would be Coach Carter, um, is my feel-good film. But I think how he flips that whole team around and he doesn't only coach them basketball, he shows them how to excel in life. I think that's something that as a coach is what I want to do for my kids that I coach. Not only coach them how to play basketball, but how to be a better person in general in life. So Coach Carter's got to be my one. When I was playing for Kestrels, um, I think it must have been two years ago because that's when my best friend still played with me before she moved away. Um, we were up, I want to say in Hertfordshire, I could have that wrong. And there was like two seconds left on the shot clock. She had the ball launched at her and she was closer to the halfway line than the three point line right like trap in the best trap position you could possibly get she had a player up on her there's two seconds left and she literally just got the ball and launched it behind her head and we're like what is she doing banks it and it goes in oh and we're just there like i mean how have you just done that brilliant If I'm remembered for being a role model to kids, that that's just probably the best thing for me. Um, if s some of my athletes go on and make it big time and they have an interview, something like this, and they say that I was one of their biggest influences, that, that, that would just be top of the world for me. If I'm teaching PE to my year sevens, whistle. 100% because they're not quiet and they don't listen. When I coach basketball, no whistle, unless it's a game situation. So the last 20 to 30 minutes of practice, I try and leave for gameplay. And that's when I use the whistle a lot because it, for me, it reiterates a game situation. So they're used to learning that they have to listen to the whistle for cues. But in like the regular practice time when we're doing drills and stuff, I got a loud voice, so I just tend to shout, <laughs> um, if I'm totally honest. And if I blow the whistle all the time, they get annoyed at me. 